Okay, so can somebody else read so I don't have to read again? McNellis Company had the following account balances at December 31st. Accounts receivable $900,000. Allowance for uncollectible accounts before any provision for the year uncollectible accounts expense is $16,000. Credit sales for the year is $1,750,000. McNellis is considering the following methods of estimating uncollectible accounts expense for the year. Um, based on credit sales, A, 2%. Based on accounts receivable at 5%. What amount should McNellis charge to uncollectible accounts expense under each method? Okay, so this is really a problem that you should have learned in principal accounting one, but maybe two. So basically we know that we're, the reason businesses offer to sell goods on account is because it helps to increase sales. So they will allow people to buy items and take them home without paying for them because they're on account. When that happens, sometimes people don't pay, right? Unfortunately, they don't pay. So we have to take into account that even though we made the sale and on account, we may never get paid. Was the sale recorded? Yes, the sale was recorded because the criteria for recording the sale was achieved by allowing the customer to take the goods with him or her. So now we have to figure out, well, what are we gonna do when people don't pay? Well, one thing we can do is just wait until they don't pay, and then we can write the accounts off individually. So we can say maybe Joe Smith didn't pay his accounts receivable, so we're gonna write off Joe Smith. That method would work if it's very infrequent and the amounts are very small. But if it is, if there's a, a material difference between using what's called the direct write-off method and the allowance method, then GASB or FASB requires that you use the uh, allowance method. So here's the allowance method. When you, you're going to allow or you're going to sign, kind of put aside a little amount that you believe, I shouldn't say little, you're gonna put an amount that you believe is likely to be uncollectible. And how are you going to decide that? Well, the first year of business, it would be very difficult to decide how much of your receivables you'll never collect. But over time, you'll start to get a feel for it, how much will not be collectible. So remember, you have the direct write-off method, which again, can be used as long as it, as it is not materially different from the allowance method. When you get to the allowance method, you have two options. One is, to look at the two items that are related to credit sales. The first one would be credit sales, right? So you can look at what percentage of your credit sales never pay. The other account that's associated with credit sales is accounts receivable. So you can look at your accounts receivable and say, how much of our receivables do we not ever collect? I know that grammar sounds weird, so <laughs> forgive me for that, but I think you get the idea. So the two methods under the allowance method are as a percentage of credit sales, and that's sometimes referred to as the income statement method because sales is on the income statement. And the other method is called the, uh, the allowance is based on accounts receivable, and some people refer to that as the balance sheet method because accounts receivable is on the balance sheet. The easier of the two methods would be a percentage of credit sales because the only math that you have to do is to take the percentage, which in this case we were given as 2%, and multiply it times credit sales for that year. So I take 2% times credit sales for that year, which was $1,750,000, and I come up with $35,000. So my journal entry would be debit, bad debt expense, or maybe uncollectible accounts expense, however you want to say it uncollectible accounts doesn't sound quite as, as undesirable as bad debt uh, expense, but that would be the debit, some sort of an expense, and the credit would be allowance for bad debt expense, or allowance for uncollectible accounts, allowance for bad debt. Don't put the word expense in the credit. Okay, so that's the easier of the two methods. The other method isn't difficult either, but as a percentage of, of percentage of accounts receivable, you're going to look at the accounts receivable that you have, 
which is $900,000 at the end of the year, and you multiply that times the percentage. So that percentage is 5%. Well, $900,000 times 5% is $45,000. But this is the amount that I want to have in the allowance account, right? I'm saying uh, this is going to be my debit to bad debt expense, credit allowance for uncollectible accounts. But I want that to be my ending balance. So I'm going to make a note here, 5% of credit sales is the desired ending balance in the allowance account. So that's the desired, this 45,000 is my desired ending balance in the allowance account. I need to know, well, what's in the allowance account now? So I did a T account for you because that's the easiest way to, to visualize it. So you know that accounts receivable is an asset, so it has a normal balance of a debit. Well, the allowance account is a contra asset, so it's normal balance of the credit. So we have a $16,000 credit balance in the allowance account. I know that because it was given in the problem. I want the balance in the allowance account to be $45,000 because I'm using the percentage of accounts receivable method here. So this is the ending balance I want. So the amount that I need is going to be whatever it's going to take to go from 16,000 to 45,000. So we can do this with a formula to make sure we don't make any mistakes. I could take 45,000 and subtract off 16,000 and I get $29,000. So 29,000 is the amount that I would put in my journal entry. So I would be debiting bad debt expense, credit, allowance for uncollectible accounts, $29,000. So just remember that when you're using the, uh, based on the percentage of accounts receivable, accounts receivables on the balance sheet, and if I had to pick one of the two statements that's a little more complex to prepare, the balance sheet is more complex to prepare than the income statement. Do you agree? Yes. Even in its most basic format, the income statement is revenue minus expenses equals income, and the balance sheet is assets plus liabilities, or assets equals liabilities plus equities. So even in its most basic format, the balance sheet is more complex, and so is this method. <laughs> it's going to be a slightly more complex than using the percentage of credit sales. So that's all there is to this problem. I don't think there's anything else. That one was pretty easy, right? Any questions on that one? No. Stop sharing. I meant to hit. 